Hello! Welcome to another video. It is very late right now, but I wanted to take the time. Today is technically the last day of the year, and I wanted to do what I did for last year. Talk about my favorite albums of the year. Instead of talking about all the albums that came out this year, I wanted to constrict it to a good top eight. It being the year that it was, there wasn't that much music that was released this year. I kind of just wanted it to be like eight records that I really listened to a lot, or that I was really Really impressed by throughout the whole year. Yeah, we're just gonna list them in really no particular order. Let's let's start talking about these these albums. First one, the Dealer Saint EP. Yeah! That came out earlier pretty early into the year. I'm, I know there's a lot of controversy going around about how the lead singer is just like a bad person in general. He's been accused of a bunch of things and honestly, I don't really follow him that closely. I just love this EP. In terms of metalcore and in terms of heaviness, especially in the guitar work, the, I really love the guitar work for Dealer. And I know the band members kind of split apart. The sound that Dealer had was really cool, but I mean, I get it. Even, even through all the controversy, I'm still putting this one in my top eight just because this record itself is really really good moving on moving on to the next one probably the record that has had the biggest impact on my channel Re most recent album by Bring Me The Horizon, post-human survival horror. Probably one of my favorite albums of this year, hands down. This this was like, by far, the most diverse of all the records. It has songs of every genre. It's all tied into like one theme. The sound is very cohesive throughout the record. There's heavies, there's melodies. This record for Bring Me The Horizon is one of their best records they've ever made. Obviously, the, the song Kingslayer was really big impact on my channel. It's the most viewed video on my channel as of now, I think. Going on to the next one. Passenger. So Passenger, I didn't really talk about this one a lot on my channel. I mentioned the band once. I listened to this whole record on my own time and it's so good. And I feel like it was really underrated for, for what it was. It had a very futuristic type of sound. I feel like it sounded a lot like Bad Omens and North Lane kind of put together. I feel like the song Sync is probably my favorite off of this record. I like that dystopian kind of futuristic sound to metalcore stuff. I feel like it adds a very interesting flavor flavor to the music. And it's sort of the, the direction that most metalcore bands are taking nowadays, and I'm completely okay with that. It's such a cool sound. And I really like the, the art style of this album art itself is really, really unique and interesting. I would definitely recommend this band if no one has heard of them. That's it for that one. Moving on to the next one. Blood in my head! Okay, so I, w I wanted I wanted the path to be on here because one, this album was one of the biggest albums in terms of like hype for me besides Bring Me the Horizon because it's fit for king. The the most popular ones obviously being Vendetta and Stockholm. Those are like the heaviest ones of the album. But I feel like fit for king really shines when they show their emotional side and songs like Profit and louder voice like those type of songs are the essence of what Fifra King is and I know like a lot of people like their heaviest heavier stuff but that emotional side of Fifra King is something that I would listen to over and over and over again so I'm so glad I'm so happy with that record Fifra King did an amazing job the album art is very very cool and it contrasts heavily towards their record that came out before this one Dark Skies and I really like the direction that they chose for that that whole record I feel like my favorite song off the track is probably Profit. It was just a really good album and they were they're pushing the envelope in terms of what they want to do and I feel like their next re next record is going to be even better. But that being said, move on to the next one. Chip Chrome and the Monotone. A little left field to the, the whole theme that I have going on here. This is one of the records that I listen to literally over and over and over again. So, songs in particular, probably Devil's Advocate, Pretty Boy. I've always 
sort of been a fan of the neighborhood i've never really gotten too much into them but when it came to this record there was something about it that i enjoyed a lot it was a very nice record overall i feel like the style that the neighborhood has it's sort of varied throughout the years but i feel like for the most part it stayed generally the same like again the futuristic in a more cheesy sense sort of aspect that they're going for here. If any of you haven't checked out this record, I would definitely recommend it. It's a really nice record to get into. Next album! On to the next album! Ah! <laughs> Alpha Wolf, A Quiet Place to Die. I have not heard the whole record yet. I still have to react to it, but I feel like with the songs that I have heard, it's definitely shocked me. It's like one of those records that I'm, I'm sort of getting the vibe off of that it's a record that people will talk about for years to come. Much like how Wage War was with Deadweight, it's just gonna become like one of those albums that are a staple in the metalcore community. Alpha Wolf in general has been getting a lot of traction, especially with this record here. I feel like even though I haven't heard most of the record and I've only heard like basically just a few tracks off the album, it's definitely left a huge impression on me. I can't really say that about a lot of records. I focus a lot on the guitar work because I myself play guitar. Hearing how they construct their rhythm, especially in like Akudama, the, some of the sounds that they're making in those riffs is so amazing. All right, next song. Song? Album. Next album. Polaris. Laris, The Death of Me. It doesn't feel like it came out this year. I feel like it came out a long time ago. But this record is so freaking good. It's really cool to see how much they've evolved throughout the years, especially the guitarist. I know I say this with every single one, but the guitarists for Polaris are freaking monsters. And the breakdowns for most of these songs are some of my favorite breakdowns that I've ever heard. There's so many cool things about this record that I can go on and on and on about. Listen to it, front to back. And if you have heard it, listen to it again. It is so good. I'm very happy with that one. That was one of my favorites that came out this year for sure. That was the 2020 top albums of the year for me personally. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite albums that came out this year were. I know there was a lot of albums that I didn't mention, but I wanted to keep it short and simple. With that being said, that's gonna be it for the video. And if you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. That's gonna be it for the video. I will see you guys next year in the next video. Bye!